Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Here is Dungeon Busters, which is a little small, very portable game comes in a small box. You'll see everything is just kind of squashed in here. This is actually a perfectly sized box. It gives you a little bit for cushion and place to put your stuff. Let me get it set up and I'll show you how to play. Okay, what you have here is your spoil cards, your dungeon decks, which are one, two, and three. For each number, one, two, and three, you'll take one out randomly. And you'll have your little gems and diamonds you'll get. Everybody will start out with a set of cards in their own color. They will be numbered between one and seven. They will each be just, just kind of generic looking. And in certain number counts, you'll take out a number just to make things work a little bit better. Each turn, what you're going to do is flip over a monster that you will fight. And what you'll see up here is his number. And this is what number you guys are trying to get over. So collectively, you want to get four. Now, whoever plays the lowest card will get the goodie down here. And sometimes they'll have more than one. So in this case, collectively, we want to score more than four and whoever has the lowest card will be one. So everybody will take one of their cards and play it face down and simultaneously pull it over. If the numbers that everybody played together is higher than the number on the card, in this case four, you have defeated it. In that case, whoever has played the lowest number will get the goodie on the card. So if we played this, eight, we will have defeated it. Yellow will receive the blue gem. Pink will receive nothing. You'll put these cards, keep them face up where everybody can see it, and they can no longer be drawn until you get to the next level of dungeon. Let me show you, let me show you a dungeon three. So here we're trying to get eight. The first, whoever has the lowest card gets two gold, and whoever has the second gets two. Works the same way. If it is less than the seven, so if all the cards combined is less than seven, whoever played the lowest card then loses all of their gems of a certain color, whichever one they have the most of. So gold, pink, or blue. So this example, we played three, we busted. Pink, let's say they had, let's, let's say purple had this as their gems. They had the lowest card. They would have to get rid of all of their blue and only have gold and red remaining. Another little addition to the game is the spoils. So whenever you lose and you get those tokens, they get put on the spoils card. And the next person who wins, the spoils is shared amongst the winners so each person who wins will take one starting with whoever played the lowest card will get first pick and you'll keep going around until there's nothing left that can be evenly distributed off of the spoils card so that's something you have to play to also the scoring of the game is fairly easy you get one point for each gem that you have regardless of the color you will get three points if you have one of each color and three points for each set like that that you have and you also get three points if you have the most. So whoever has the most blue will get three points. Whoever has the most gold will get three points. Whoever has the most red will get three points. So strategically, you want to think about kind of what you're doing, although you don't have a lot of control over what cards you have. So you'll be playing cards face down, hoping that it's the least amount. But if everybody plays a card, then you may not get it because it has to be the lowest card. Now, the other trick to the game is such that if two players play the same card, so if I played a three and the green player played a three, then the threes won't count. So you also want to play cards that don't match. That can be a little ripple in the game. You're allowed to talk. You can tell people what you're going to play, and they can believe you or not believe you or play corresponding to that. But if it has the same number, then it will not count. So it's a little bit of a, a blind game where you're putting cards down, hoping you're the lowest, and sometimes you'll just punt it. I'm not going to be the lowest this time, um, and, and so be it. But you might not want the reward as much, and you don't want to burn that card that you have. Dungeon Busters is a nice little filler game that plays three to five players. There is some strategy in the game, but there is a lot of luck about what's going to be turned over. But the difference between winning and losing is going to be reading your opponents, seeing what cards they have down, and what you think they're likely to play. And quite honestly, the better you know your opponents, probably the better you're going to do at this game. If you play the same card, it's worth nothing. So you want to kind of play the lowest card, but not always, because sometimes you might just want to punt something so everybody else plays their ones and you play a seven look you're the only one with a one left so that's really good for you the game is kind of neat it can be swingy about how you lose like all of one color that's quite a bit at times especially when you get rewarded for the matching so sometimes it might be better to 
you know, play that higher, if you're ahead, play the higher cards because you don't need more points. You just don't want to lose any points. But that gives an opportunity for other people to catch up. So it has that kind of built in catch up mechanism that works fairly well. I'm not crazy about the theme. It is what it is. It's, it's another generic little cutesy dungeon diver where you're looking for stuff, but really just playing these cards, getting these matching set collection, if you will. I think it works really well. It's not a game that I want to play like 15 times in a row. You're going to set a night around it. But it is a little fun, like waiting on people to show up or in the night with something, and it can be cut throws. Now, I don't know. Maybe it has a little bit of runaway leader. I don't know. It's not one of those games that you worry about that stuff too much. It just kind of is. But I had a lot of fun with it. I think you will too. I think it's portable. It's cheap. It's not very expensive. I think that it works on a lot of different avenues. Nearly anyone can play this game. Uh, if you have a short fuse, you, know, you definitely can get frustrated if you keep playing the card and it matches somebody else randomly. But if you're really just looking to have fun, you have a few people around, you want to play something like this, this is actually a really fun one to get that I highly recommend. So for me, it's going to be a keeper. It has enough decision making in it, but it's light enough to chat over. Great pub game, Dungeon Buster. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.